In a world hungry for sustainable energy, generating electricity from fusion sounds like a compelling proposition. But how long will it, will it actually take before we can plug a fusion power plant into the electricity grid? I'm Mateen Durrani, editor of Physics World, and I'm here with David Ward at the Cullum Centre for Fusion Energy. David spent 25 years in fusion research and is closely involved in plans for the first industrial prototype fusion power plant. David, could you tell me more about ITER, the next generation fusion experiment that's being built in southern France? Yeah, sure. The um, original strategy for achieving fusion had three main phases. There was the scientific demonstration of fusion power, which is done here at JET, so that was the first phase. The next phase is producing fusion power at an industrial scale, and that's this ITER device that we're talking about, designed to produce maybe 500 megawatts of power instead of JET's 20 megawatts of fusion power. After that, there's a device planned called DEMO, which will be the first demonstration fusion power station. Now, ITER takes us nearly all the way from JET, the scientific demonstration, through to the power station DEMO. And, and so ITER is this next big thing. It's being built in the south of France. And we're fairly confident that ITER, along with the other things we have to do, such as developing the technology, developing the materials, that will allow us to build the first fusion power station. So ITER is clearly an important stepping stone from JET here at Cullum along the road to a commercial fusion power plant. ITER is an industrial scale experiment. It's got to survive the high levels of power it produces and it's a real test for it. Um, if that's successful we can then move on to DEMO which has different challenges again. Just to say quickly, JET runs only for a minute at a time. ITER will run for minutes up to hours but DEMO is going to have to run for many months, perhaps a year at a time, like a power station uh, needs to do. And that's a huge challenge for the materials and for the reliability of components. So there's a lot of work to be done to get us to demo, but ITER and associated facilities, let's hope, will do a lot of that work. So I was going to say, designing the materials for ITER and demo, that can't be an easy challenge at all, can it? No, ITER's not too bad. It uses relatively conventional materials. This is because ITER will still be an experimental device. It won't run for nine months at a time, which would destroy conventional materials. It'll only run for minutes or up to an hour. So conventional materials are okay in ITER, except for this issue of the high power. In JET, we keep it clinically clean. There's almost no fuel in JET. It's the size of a house, has a hundredth of a gram of fuel in it. Now ITER's a bigger device, much high power, you've got to handle these high power levels but at the same, same time still keep the machine clinically clean. That's a big challenge. DEMO then has got a bigger challenge still which is the neutrons produced from fusion. They damage the walls of the structure and, and will um, lead you to have to replace them quite quickly. So we've got to develop new materials for DEMO. ITER we can just about do with the existing materials. So DEMO is going to be a prototype power plant, but do you see just one version of it or lots of them? No, my, my own feeling is we talk as though there's this strategy, a linear strategy, JET, ITER, DEMO. In fact, if ITER is successful and there's still a big energy crisis, let's say, then I imagine there'll be lots of DEMOs. So there'll be a Japanese DEMO, a French DEMO, probably more likely a Chinese demo, an Indian demo, because that's where the real demands for energy are going to come. So my guess is that one is the least likely number of demos. It'll either be zero because we don't need it, or there'll be maybe 10 or 15 or something like that. Of course, they won't all be identical. So it's time to put your neck on the line, David. When do you actually see the first power plant based on fusion that we could plug into our electricity grid and start powering our homes? More realistically, the way we're going, it's going to be 30 to 40 years away, I would think. I hope we could build it in the 2030s, but let's see. So possibly 2040, 2050, we're talking that kind of time. Scale. Yeah, I think so, realistically. Great, thanks very much, David. Thank you, Mateen.